How's it going everybody? Dato Doi here with a different kind of video for you all today. Originally I wasn't going to upload a video today because I didn't have time to edit anything. But after seeing a video made by this channel, I really couldn't stop thinking about this topic. The link to the video will be down in the description below if you want to watch it. If you don't have enough time or would rather just skip watching the video, it basically covers the public execution of good fighting games. With most of the video being focused on games that are good at their core, but there's people that want the games to fail, so they bring up all of the nitpicky issues without talking about the things that really matter in fighting games. And this video makes it a point to imply that the only qualities that really matter in fighting games are balance and depth. Problems with any other aspects of the game are considered non-issues that are being blown out of proportion and harming the sales of the game simply because the public decided it didn't like the game before it released. And this video really made me think about fighting games and what they mean to me personally. And as someone that completely disagrees with the video, I really wanted to put out a video from the other side of the spectrum. Roster balance and depth may add a little enjoyment to the game for some players, but they're far from being the most important factors in good fighting games. And I think to really see that, all you need to do is think back to the first fighting game that you ever played. Odds are you didn't fall in love with that game because the characters were so balanced, or that the mechanics were streamlined and made competitive. You probably enjoyed that game so much because it had characters you thought were really cool, or the music was really catchy, or the stages looked awesome. And you would invite your friends over to play and they would pick their favorite characters and you would pick yours. You'd go against each other trying to figure out the special moves before the other person did, and if you ever pulled it off your character would scream the name of it and throw it out. And then what happens next separates the people that really fell in love with fighting games and those that continued to enjoy them casually. Those that wanted to pull off even crazier things with their characters would continue to search out new people to play against and new ways that they could improve at playing their character. My point is basically this. People originally enjoyed competing in games because they loved the games they were competing in. And I think somewhere between then and now we've kind of gotten used to just loving competing instead of the games themselves. And I think Capcom has noticed this. To me it feels like with Street Fighter V and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, they were focusing too hard on making sure the game had an eSports focus. Street Fighter V's initial release was not really appreciated by fans because of the lack of content, and it really came to a boiling point with MVCI. The game was lacking in content, the game's story mode was bad, the visuals were awful, the music was bland, and the roster was worse than the last game. In fact, most things in MVCI were just worse than Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The only thing they had going for them was their mechanics, which they were hoping would be enough to fuel the esports scene for the game. But other than the top level players and a few diehard fans, nobody was willing to accept Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite as a $60 product. If fighting games are ever going to grow beyond their niche audience, they need to take the proper steps in becoming great games not just good fighting games. There's a reason I love Dragon Ball Fighters so much, it's because it gives you something even if you're not a typical fan of fighting games. The visuals are absolutely out of this world, so fans of Dragon Ball will buy the game just to have fun with it. There's enough character moments there, cool cutscenes, and fun special moves to draw them in. Does that necessarily mean that every Dragon Ball fan who picks up this game is going to fall in love with the fighting game genre and go to tournaments? No, not really. For some of them, it'll stop there. They'll pick it up and play with some friends, and they'll enjoy seeing their favorite characters on the screen. But for some, they'll fall in love with the way the game is played, and they'll want to try out the best and biggest combos their characters can offer. And so they'll go on YouTube and look up combo videos, maybe get involved with a subreddit, and then maybe naturally over time, because they love the game, they'll find themselves at tournaments competing. There's even some Dragon Ball YouTubers that play fighters from time to time that usually don't interact or talk about fighting games at all. But they make videos on this game because this is the fighting game that appeals to them. With Marvel being so big, this was MVCI's chance to really grab hold of something their fans wanted to see while also reaching out to the Capcom fans and creating something that both sides would love. And instead of doing that, they decided to hope people would buy the game anyway, because hey, there's going to be a pro tour, and it's the next Marvel. But people couldn't fall in love with a game lacking in so many areas. So I think it's perfectly reasonable that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite failed the way it did. You shouldn't hold people to buy games simply because they're good fighting games. You should be allowed to have standard on your $60 games. And before I end the video, I do want to make one last point about loving the games you compete in. You see, although not being a traditional fighter, Super Smash Bros. Melee is loved by a ton of people, usually bringing in a bigger audience than most normal fighting games. And is it because their characters are balanced? Not really. Is it because the mechanics are very competitively sound? No, from what I've heard, there's some really cheap stuff in that game. It's because almost everybody remembers playing it on their GameCube when they were younger, 
And while they didn't necessarily play it like the pros do, when they hear that there's a professional scene for Melee, they think, oh, I used to play that game. I wonder what the pros look like. And then upon rediscovering it, some people even jump back into the game to see if they can do what they're seeing on screen. And it's because of their love for the characters in the game, or the way the game is played, that a game released in 2001 has a more active scene than MVCI, which was released in late 2017. Those are pretty much my thoughts on the topic, and I really wanted to get this video out after watching that other video, as I was really thinking about this a lot. Let me know down in the comments what you think about all this, and whether or not you think the internet's treatment of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was fair. While you're down there, if you like this video and enjoy the channel, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I'm Dato Doya, and I'll see you in the next video.